Hi, it's Katrina! From ancient burial suits to the first magic wand, here are 10 of the most amazing and mysterious archaeological treasures. Number 10. The Jade Burial Suit The Jade Burial Suit is the Chinese equivalent to an Egyptian burial coffin. These suits were crafted from pieces of jade and used to bury royal members of society during the Han Dynasty. And yes, the jade burial suit looks like something out of an old video game. Each suit is constructed of small jade squares, almost like pixels, and each is honestly a little frightening. The different pieces of jade are generally joined together by wire, silver, or gold, though the famous jade burial suit of King Zhao Mo had its jade fragments tied together with silk. The bindings were almost always dependent on how high up in the hierarchy the deceased person was. For example, emperors almost always had gold or silk thread in their burial suits, while those of a much lower status would have been stuck with ordinary wire. A single suit took several years to make. But here's the fascinating part about jade burial suits. For a long time, archaeologists thought they were only legends. It wasn't until 1968 when two complete jade suits were discovered that archaeologists realized the legends were true. Two suits were found inside the tombs of Liu Sheng and Dou Wan in the Hebei province, with each suit consisting of exactly 2,498 fragments of solid jade, one of the most precious stones in the world. More suits were found afterwards, with one in particular having 2,580 grams of gold thread. Another suit was found in 1983 that is currently exhibited at the Museum of the Mausoleum of the Nanyue King. Number 9. The Greek Sphinx Head Archaeologists recently discovered an extremely rare treasure in Greece. They managed to dig up the head of one of the missing sphinxes that is supposed to be guarding the entrance of the ancient Amphipolis tomb. The head belongs to a statue of a woman, and she was in surprisingly good shape considering her head had been separated from her body and lost for hundreds of years. The Amphipolis tomb is located in Costa Hill in the ancient city of Amphipolis, which was conquered by Alexander the Great's father. There were rumors that there was a burial mound there, but it wasn't until the 1960s until work began to uncover who might be buried inside. Could the tomb belong to Alexander the Great's mother? In addition to the Sphinx's head, portions of her two wings were also found nearby. In 2015, archaeologists uncovered chambers decorated with marble sphinxes, mosaics, and a limestone sarcophagus with hundreds of bone fragments. DNA analysis has helped to reveal that there are at least five people buried in the tomb, but the mystery remains, who were they? Right now, the project has no funding to continue, but there is work going on to open the site to the public. Number 8. The Aladdin Lamp A lamp that may or may not have contained a genie 900 years ago was recently found on a beach in the Mediterranean. This discovery was made near the Israeli city of Ashkelon, when a lifeguard working for the Nature and Parks Authority saw an ancient oil lamp in the sand that turned out to be from the 12th century. According to the lifeguard, he said he didn't try to rub it to see if a genie would come out, so that's a bit of a bummer. But in all likelihood, if there had been a genie in the lamp, somebody had probably got their wishes quite some time ago. It's not clear where the lamp came from, but it was probably lost 900 years ago when Ashkelon was a bustling port city that imported valuable goods from the neighboring Mediterranean countries. And interestingly enough, the lamp was found in the same region where the mythological creatures known as jinn, which of course were the inspiration for Aladdin's genie, came from. People have been telling stories about jinn for over 4,500 years. Jinn are spirits typically made of fire and air that can either help a person or ruin their life. And now for some sounds from the past, but I first want to give a big shout out to Jay Jones and Daughter! Thanks to you both for watching and supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join us! Number 7. Ancient Shell Horn After 17,000 years of silence and a few decades sitting quietly in a French museum, one of the first ever shell horns played music once again. Just this year, the ancient shell fashioned into a horn by a prehistoric human was played by a musician who found it emitted tones similar to C, C-sharp, and D. The seashell also emitted sound at an astounding 100 decibels. As for the shell itself, scientists believe it is an ancient conch that once belonged to a species of huge sea snails living in the Atlantic Ocean. It was discovered in 1931 very near to Marsula's cave, which contains artwork from the last ice age. 
This treasure is obviously very old, and when it was first found, scientists thought it was just a ceremonial drinking cup and stored it in the museum and forgot about it. It wasn't until now that scientists took the instrument out and decided to give it a shot. It is now believed to be the oldest wind instrument that has ever been found. According to a senior scientist at the French National Center for Scientific Research who happened to participate in the research of the conch, the sound it makes is a direct link with our very own ancient ancestors. The conch was probably used by the Magdalenian people, who were prehistoric hunters spread across Europe back when animals like mammoths and giant bison still roamed the land. Many tools and weapons have been found that trace back to the Magdalenian people, but this instrument gives us their sound. It is so loud it is similar to the roar of an approaching subway train. Scientists believe it was probably used as a calling device or even as a warning system, like the world's first alarm system. How's your lungs? Would you want to try out this ancient shell horn? Let me know in the comments below. Number 6. An Ancient Wand Something described as an ancient wand was recently found in the Negev Desert of Israel. The artifact was made from lead and wood and it was discovered inside a burial chamber that dates back 6,000 years. The grave was deep in the back of a desert cave, and a new study has found that the artifact could be the oldest evidence of smelted lead ever. This is pretty amazing because 6,000 years ago, ancient humans were able to work with copper but not really with lead, according to Nama Yahalom Mack, the lead researcher on the project and a student of archaeology at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Initial analysis of the lead inside the wand suggests it came from Anatolia, which is now modern-day Turkey. The wand likely had great significance to whoever it was buried with, but unfortunately, nobody has been able to figure out what the wand was used for. It obviously wasn't a magic wand, even though it looks like something that would be in a Harry Potter movie. It could have been used for ceremonial purposes, it could have been part of a larger weapon, or it could have been something as boring as a spindle used for making clothing. Some of the researchers suggested that perhaps it had been used in rituals and then repurposed later for some completely mundane task. And as an extra piece of interesting information, researchers have suggested that ancient people in the Middle East learned how to smelt lead much earlier than other groups evident based on the lead worked into this mysterious wand. That would mean that whoever made this was more advanced than the surrounding cultures. Number 5. The Sibele Plate The Sibele Plate is one of the most fascinating archaeological treasures found at the ancient site of Ay Kanum in Afghanistan. Ay Kanum was a major city around 280 BC during the Greco-Bactrian Kingdom. This kingdom was the easternmost part of the Greek world, and the city was in a very strategic location. There was gold, mineral resources, and trading between the Chinese Empire, the Indian subcontinent, and the Greeks. Iconum was far from Greece but had all the characteristics of a Hellenistic city combined with Eastern influences. The plate depicts Sibele herself, the goddess of nature, fertility, and protection in times of war. She is accompanied by Nike, who is the personification of victory. The two characters can be seen riding on a chariot drawn by a pair of lions and it is one of the most remarkable examples of a blend between Greek and Middle Eastern art. This amazing relic alone encapsulates what the arts looked like during Greece's conquest of modern-day Afghanistan in the 3rd century BC. The plate itself was likely an offering for the goddess, who originated in ancient Anatolia but had been adopted by the Greeks. You can see the plate today where it is currently being kept at the National Museum of Afghanistan in Kabul. Number 4. Russian Burial Treasures Archaeologists discovered the tomb of a noblewoman from an ancient and mysterious tribe known as the Sarmatians, who roamed across the Eurasian steppes in the south of Russia 2,500 years ago. But it wasn't the tomb itself that was exciting. It was the strange treasure found inside that really grabbed the world's attention. Most Sarmatian burial grounds have been discovered already looted by gravediggers, as they are known for holding large amounts of gold and bronze artifacts. This latest discovery on Russian soil was one of the first of its kind because the tomb had somehow survived undetected. Archaeologists found jewelry, a silver mirror, a container filled with ancient cosmetics, and the skeleton of a woman adorned with extremely expensive jewelry. There was gold, silver, and even a giant bronze kettle. These ancient treasures had been placed inside the tomb by the nomadic tribe, and the discovery has given archaeologists a deeper look into how the Sarmatians lived. They controlled much of southern Russia and Central Asia up until 400 AD and are still known today for their ferocious female warriors who fought alongside the men as equals. The Sarmatian warriors are often believed to be more deadly, more dangerous, 
and even more brutal than the Vikings. Number 3. Roman Coins in Japan Inside an ancient Japanese castle, archaeologists stumbled upon a rare collection of ancient Roman coins. Archaeologist Hiroyuki Miyagi unearthed the coins while investigating the old Katsurin Castle in Okinawa, and he originally thought that the coins had been placed there as a joke, as it didn't make any sense for there to be Roman coins in the castle. Miyagi even told CNN that he thought they were replicas left behind by tourists. But no, they turned out to be 100% real. At least 10 Roman coins were discovered alongside ancient Japanese samurai armor. Using X-ray technology, Miyagi identified engravings on the coins that dated them back to between 300 and 400 AD. Unfortunately, this did not help identify where the coins came from or how they made it to Japan. During the 14th and 15th centuries, the castle in Okinawa had been trading with China and several neighboring Asian countries, though there has never been any direct link between Japan and ancient Rome. That means the only explanation is that the coins had been passed on from Rome to someone else, then to someone else, and eventually traded to someone from Japan who left them at the castle. Miyagi is still working to figure out how the coins ended up there, and believe it or not, they weren't the only treasures found inside Katsurin Castle. There were also Chinese coins and ceramics, as well as Japanese artifacts that had probably been used by the residents who once lived there. Number 2. Michigan Relics In the late 1800s, immigrants in Michigan planting their first crops came across massive mounds filled with ancient artifacts. Made from clay, copper, and slate, most of the relics had strange inscriptions that nobody could decipher. With thousands of relics bearing an unrecognizable language, authorities set out to learn more and try to uncover who had left these behind. There was a mix of several ancient languages, and the objects depicted scenes of ancient religious art, with some containing symbols recognizable as Noah's Ark, the Tower of Babel, and the Crucifixion. Was it a lost civilization or an elaborate hoax? With some 3,000 to 9,000 artifacts uncovered with this ancient cuneiform, many of the objects were either tablets, ornaments, or tools. Depicted with vivid scenes, archaeologists originally dismissed the objects as being crude fakes. But some people today still believe that they may point to traces of pre-Columbian Coptic Christians in Michigan. Now known as the Michigan Relics, the tablets found in the burial mounds were categorized by the artwork on them. Those with writing and depictions were split into subgroups depending on whether they had biblical, battle scenes, or calendar records on them. Although some still believe they are a hoax, analysis done on the plates showed that whoever carved them had a fluency in the language, which led to some believing in their authenticity. There has been much controversy regarding the Michigan tablets. Several theories propose that some influence from another world is responsible for these relics. In a book about this topic published in the 80s, by comparing ancient copper mines that were located on Isle Royal, Michigan from 1800 to 1000 BC and tying them to the Greeks and Egyptians who extensively used copper at the same time, the author believes that the tablets may have come from an alien people discovered in both Greek and Egyptian records. Known as the Keftiu to the ancient Egyptians, they were said to be red-skinned people who came from the Isles of the Seas. Another researcher looking into the origin of the relics is said to have found a mystical symbol that he believes points to 4th century Coptic Egyptian Christians. Known as one of the oldest Christian churches in the Middle East, Coptic Christians originated in Egypt shortly after the death of Jesus. Now, the University of Michigan and professional archaeologists have said that the relics are quite crude, and while clergymen wanted to believe in the biblical images depicted in the tablets, they are just whimsical objects made by locals. All they did was confuse people about the past and create a looting spree when everyone went to try to steal things from the real ancient burial sites. Number 1. Lost Greek Treasures Archaeologists excavating the lost city of Tanea have uncovered a stockpile of invaluable artifacts including coins, sculptures, baths, and even ordinary things like lamps and household goods. The discovery of the lost city itself was pretty big news since for a long time there had been rumors that an ancient city had been built on the coast of Greece to house the prisoners left over from the Trojan War, and that it had grown into a thriving metropolis under Roman rule, only to later be lost and forgotten. The city was abandoned in 400 AD for unknown reasons, and was not discovered again until 2013 when excavations began. But even after it was found again, it took another five years for archaeologists to confirm that they were indeed digging in the mythical lost city of Tanea. They had to uncover enough artifacts to confirm their theory, and they definitely have. 
An oil lamp was discovered with the depiction of the Trojan hero Aeneas carrying his father during the evacuation of Troy, but they also found coins, cosmetic containers, and lots of statues that confirm their theory. And as for where the residents of Tenea went and how the city was lost, it's believed that the Slavs invaded the area, causing the people to flee and never return. Then over time, the structures and buildings collapsed and were covered with dirt. As of right now, excavations are still ongoing. Thanks for watching! Which artifact was your favorite? What would you like to learn more about? Let me know in the comments below and remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you soon! Bye!